Hey everyone, uh, so today I wanted to take a look at the back solving method. And now the back solving method is where you're going to use your answer choices to help you solve the question. Because on the math section of the ACT, you have five possible answers for each question. So if they're going to give you the answers, why wouldn't you use them? This is the first time basically a teacher is saying, hey, if they're going to allow you to cheat, let's cheat. Okay, so let's take advantage of this on the test here. So let's take a look at this first question. It says a bag of mar uh, a bag contains four red marbles, two green marbles, and eight blue marbles. How many additional green marbles must be added to the 14 marbles in the bag so that the probability of randomly drawing a green marble is two fifths? Okay, so there's a lot going on with this, but I'm gonna focus on the question in this case. And the question is how many additional green marbles must be added? So that we get a probability of two fifths. Okay, well, let's try this out. So what I like to do here with these types of questions is I like to start somewhere like kind of right in the middle. So I'm going to start with choice C here. And I'm going to say, okay, what if we had eight additional green marbles? Well, if I had eight additional green marbles, two plus eight, that would mean I'd have 10 green marbles and four red marbles still and eight blue ones. Okay, so now I'm just going to check what's the probability of getting a green marble. Well, in this case, it would be 10 out of the total number of marbles. Well, now I'm, in my case here, I have um, 4, 10, 14, plus 8 in this case to give me 22. And 10 out of 22, if I see that probability and reduce it down, would be 5 elevenths. So that doesn't work in this case because I wanted to get 2 fifths. All right, so let's try this again. Maybe I'll try out like six here. So let's say I had six additional green marbles. So in this case, I'm gonna add six. So two plus six would give me eight green marbles. And I still have the four red, and I still have the eight blue. So now the probability of getting a green marble in this scenario would be eight out of eight, 16, 20. Eight out of 20, and if I reduce those down by dividing by 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2, 20 divided by 4 is 5. And I came up with the answer 2 fifths, which is what we wanted to arrive at. So I know that 6 must be the correct answer. All right, let's take a look at another one here. So a lot of people struggle with these percent questions, so I'm going to try to make this as easy as possible on you. It says, Trevor bought a pair of shoes that were on sale at 20% off discount. The price he paid for the shoes was $69.12, which included an 8% sales tax on the discounted price. What was the original price of the shoes? So again, first thing you want to do with this is identify the question. What was the original price of the shoes? Now realize those answer choices there are what the original price of the shoes might have been. So we're going to use those to answer this question. So again, I'm going to start with choice C right in the middle here, because sometimes that's going to tell me if I have to go higher or lower right off the bat. So let's say the original price was $100. Now, if they were on sale for 20% off, the, that's nice because 20% of 100 is just $20. So $20 off would mean they were $80. But the price we paid for the shoes according to the problem was $69.12. And that's already above that price. So that price is too high, which means I know these other two prices here must be too high. So I need to move lower in this case. So I'm going to go ahead then and try out 90. So let's say the original price of the shoes was $90 in this case. Well, then I need to figure out what 20% off would be in this case. So what you can do in this case here is I could just take 90 and multiply it by 20% means 20 out of 100. So I'm gonna multiply it by 20 out of 100, and that means it's $18. So 20% would be $18. So if it's 20% off the price, I'd have to do $90, the original price, minus off those $18, and that would be $72 in this case. So $72. But again, that is still greater than my amount that I want to pay here. So that can't be it, which means it has to be in this case, choice A. But let's go ahead and show this anyway here. 
So if the original price was $80 in this case, so again, we're gonna do $80, and now we wanna do 20% of that. So I'm gonna multiply it by, again, 20 out of 100. And in this case, we get 16. So that means it was $16 off. So if I have 80 and I take off that 20%, which is $16, that gives me that it was $64. So I get $64 here. Um, but you can see that's still not the price, but that's because it also included an 8% sales tax on the discounted price. So here's my discounted price, $64. So now if I wanna figure out what 8% of that is, I would times by eight out of 100. And I get $5.12. So the tax here is $5.12, which means the total I'm paying is 64 plus the $5.12, which gives me the $69.12. So I have my answer. All right, let's take a look at uh, this next one here. It says, whenever M and N are positive integers, such that the square root of M is equal to 16 to the N, what is the value of M over N? Okay, now again, it's real important here to focus on what the question's asking. It wants to know, what is the value of M divided by N in this case? So I wanna know what is m over n equal to? Okay, well, let's start with choice C here. Let's say m over n was four. Now four is the same thing as four over one. So what I'm saying in this case is that m is equal to four, while n is equal to one. So all I need to do now is check to see if these values make this equation up here true. So I'm gonna check does rad two to the M, which we said was four, equal 16 to the first. Okay, and then again, we can just check that right in our calculators here. If we type in radical two to the fourth, we can see that that gives me four. So this would be four equals 16 which you can see is clearly not true, which means it can't be four. So let's go ahead then and try out a different one. So let's try out M over N is equal to, why don't we go to six here, six. Again, six is the same thing as six over one. So in this scenario here, we're gonna try out radical two to the M, which is six equal to 16 to the first. And again, if we do that in our calculator here, radical um, two to the sixth would equal eight in this case. So we get eight is equal to 16 to the first, which would be 16, but that's clearly not true. So I know that's not it, but I do know that I'm getting closer here. So I'm gonna try out eight then in this case. So M over N equals eight, which is the same thing as eight over one. So I check radical two to the eighth, does that equal 16 to the first? Well, radical two to the eighth is gonna equal 16. So this equals 16. 16 to the first is 16. So yes, that works. That must be my answer. All right, this one uh, is a question that gives people a lot of trouble. So let's try this out here. It says, Rachel is filling her water bottle that is currently an eighth full. She decides to add another six ounces to the water bottle and the water bottle becomes half full. How many ounces can the water bottle hold in total? Okay, so again, we focus on the question, how many ounces can the water bottle hold in total? All right, so again, I'm gonna jump right to the middle here. I'm gonna try out 16. Let's say the water bottle holds 16 ounces. Okay, now it says, Rachel is filling up her water bottle and it's an eighth full. Well, if it's an eighth full, then we're gonna take an eighth of 16, which is one eighth times 16, which would give us two ounces. Okay, so we'd have two ounces. The next line here says, she decides to add six ounces. So now she adds six ounces. And the water bottle becomes half full, so we gotta check. Two ounces plus six ounces equals eight ounces. 
Is our water bottle half full? Sure, because 8 is half of 16. So it's half full, so we found the answer right off the bat here. It has to be 16. Finally here, let's take a look at this one. It says, at the Hockey World store, the price of one helmet is $25, and the price of one jersey is $40. Patrice spent $340 to buy 10 items, a combination of helmets and jerseys. How many jerseys did he buy? Okay, so again, we focus on the question, how many jerseys did he buy? All right, so I'm going to start with choice C. Let's say he bought five jerseys. Well, we know one jersey is $40. So each jersey is $40 here. So then he would have spent on those jerseys $200. Now we also know that he bought 10 items. So if he bought five jerseys, that means he also bought five helmets. And we said helmets were $25 each. So in this case, the total price he would have paid on those five helmets then would be $125. So you can see $200 plus $125 is $325, which is not quite enough. We wanted it to be $340. So we need to get that price higher, which means we need more of the expensive item, which in this case is the jerseys. So we need more jerseys. So I can rule out anything less in this case. So now I'm going to try out, let's say, six. How many jerseys did he buy? Let's say he bought six jerseys at $40 each. Okay, that means he would have spent a total of six times 40, or $240. Now we also know, again, he bought 10 items. So if he bought six jerseys, then he must have bought four helmets, because six plus four is 10. And those helmets were $25 each which means that he spent a total of $25 times four or $100. So total here, he paid 240 plus $100, which is $340, which is exactly what we wanted. So I know that choice D here is the correct answer. And we've solved now all these problems by just using the back solving method. So if they're gonna give you the answers, take advantage of that on the test. All right, I hope this video helped. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And as always, make sure you subscribe.